So I think we are, we are all, all of us. Um, we have now the second speaker of this morning. His name is Oscar Serrano. Um, he comes from the Public Prosecutor Office uh, here in Catalonia. Uh, he holds a law degree uh, by the Abad Oliva University from 2000, and he accepted the public prosecutor uh, career in 2005. He is a designated prosecutor, as I said, of economic crimes from 2010, and he belongs to the Public Prosecutor Office of Economic Crimes of Barcelona from May 2014. He also holds an official master's in legal sciences by the Pompeu Fabra University, and he's currently undertaking a doctoral thesis on the constitutional individual guarantees of the legal persons as the passive party in the criminal process. He's also published number, numerous articles and he's been a lecturer in several uh, seminars about this subject. So we are really glad to have uh, such an expert here today to talk to us uh, about the criminal liability of, of legal persons. I, I give him the floor. Thank you, okay. Oscar. Thank you very much, Marisa. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see that so many of you have been able to attend this presentation this morning. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here sharing the contents of this presentation with you. Uh, well, allow me to introduce, also Marija has done before. My name is Oscar Serrano Zaragoza. Nowadays I'm, in, I'm a public prosecutor, uh, specialized in corporate and financial crime, and I'm in the public prosecutor office in Barcelona. I'd like to warn that in the last years, I've exclusively speaking in Spanish, my working, so for that reason, excuse me if my English was not so fluent. Um, moreover, I like to express my, my gratitude with the Anti-Fraud Catalonian Office for trusting in me uh, to give this presentation. Right now, I'm going to make a short overview of my presentation called Compliance and Criminal Liability of Legal Persons. I'm going to divide my presentation in four parts. I think the first one is the, the main important. It's essential to understand this figure and to understand why uh, or what the Spanish legislature leads to introduce this figure such as has been provided in the, crim in the Spanish Criminal Code. So, in the first part, I'm going to describe the basis or the grounds, the economic, political, and legal basis that uh, has led the Spanish legislature to introduce this figure. These bases are um, essential to correctly interpret and understand this figure. In the second part of the presentation, I'm going to describe the facts uh, that should be ascertained or proved in, on the scope of an individual on a special criminal procedure in order to attribute uh, criminal liability to, an in, to a concrete or a specific legal person. We are going um, to link this description with the basis and grounds I've been explained before in the first part, like I said. In the third part, I'm going uh, to explain the relationship between the Spanish criminal liability of legal person system and the corporate compliance programs requires. And with linking these ideas, I'm going to express the consequence by uh, describing the basis of the exemption from criminal liability of legal entities in a specific um, criminal procedure. And finally, at the end of my presentation, I'm going to conclude by um, explaining the economic advantages of this figure, not only for the state, but, but also for the aimed uh, legal entities, for the aimed legal entities of this regulation. So, if you don't mind, at the end of my presentation, you will be free to ask me any question about the contents of the presentation. Now, I'm going to begin by explaining, I think, the main important part of this conference, of this presentation, legal um, le the legal basis of the criminal liability of legal persons. What reason um, con uh, conduct 
the, or lead the Spanish legislature to introduce this figure such as has been provided as I am going to, to explain in the second part of, the, of this presentation. The main idea is to effectively fight the phenomenon of corporate and financial organized irresponsibility, especially when um, a, a, a crime is committed for the benefit of the company itself. We have, first of all, to understand what uh, or in which consists the phenomenon of the organized irresponsibility. This phenomenon means that when a crime is going to be committed by an individual um, connected to or integrated in a company in a favor for the company itself, because of the internal complexity of the company's organization, could be very difficult to discover the, the crime, to identify the perpetrator, and to prosecute and recover the affected assets. For that reason, um, if the crime was committed, uh, there will be a disruptive effect for the legal system that um, could, could be um, not minimized uh, in the case that compliance policies were, were not uh, effectively adopted by the companies. So, the idea, the main idea is to fight effectiveness against the organized irresponsibility because the organized irresponsibility is the origin of a, of a big amount of the corporate or financial crime. If we reduce the organized irresponsibility, we are going to reduce the corporate and financial crime in the cases that this crime is committed for benefit of the company itself, because the main problem of this situation is when the company that doesn't abide by the regulation reinvests these unfair benefits in order to improve his competitive capacity, and it causes the uh, driving out of the company that are more uh, competitive of the free market. So in order to um, fight against this situation, is why the Spanish legislator decides to introduce this figure in 2010. And how is it possible to fight against the organized irresponsibility? By using, by um, requiring the, the full collaboration of the companies with the enforcement authorities in order to overcome or to circumvent the difficulty set. You know, the, on other, on, in other words, the company, if it's not well organized, acts like a neighbor or a better related to the crime committed by the individual connected to or integrated in the company. Because this individual uses the organizational structure of the company like it was a mask in order to commit a crime without any personal cost for him or herself. This is the main idea. Uh, if it happens, this, organization, this organiza organizational defect uh, encourages the individual commit the, uh, to commit the crime. And perhaps the own organization, the own legal entity, could be encouraged to create or maintain this defect of organization because of if these crimes could generate profit for itself. This is the reason why the Spanish legislator, with this regulation, requires the cooperation of the companies by adopting compliance policies to fight against the phenomenon of the organized irresponsibility. Uh, so, the result required uh, for the Spanish legislature in an individual case is, sorry, to reduce the difficulties or to overcome the difficulties to discover the crime, to identify the perpetrator and to prosecute or, and recover the affected assets in a case in which an individual integrated in the company finally could commit a crime, could bring the crime to fruition and this crime was committed in the benefit of the company itself. In conclusion, the legislature purposes is producing 
or redu sorry, reducing the financial and corporate crime by using these uh, compliance policies required to the companies with this regulation in order to improve the, um, the, capa the competitive capacity of the companies in the free market. Now, I'm going to study the economic basis of the criminal liability of legal persons. Vale. It's to improve, and this, this idea is important because the idea is that this regulation is not an administrative burden for companies, but also is, or it could generate uh, benefits for the state and uh, for the companies too. And this is the reason why, to improve at the lowest possible cost, this idea is a constitutional idea because uh, all regulation uh, should respect the constitutional values of economic efficiency, proportionality and rationality. To improve at the lowest possible economic cost, the competitive capacity of companies in the national sphere through reducing the corporate and financial crime by uh, requiring um, compliant policies that should be created and implemented by the companies that uh, lets uh, the enforcement authorities in a real case to circumvent the difficulties set before that were uh, the legal basis that led the Spanish legislature to implement or uh, to introduce this figure. Developing this idea, the first idea uh, of the system such as being provided by the Spanish legislature is that the economic inability of the state to directly control and regulate the legal criminal risk of having an individual committing a crime for the benefit of the legal person in the case of huge and complex business organizations. The problem is that um, the, compl the internal complexity of the company uh, related to internal complexity of the company, the state is completely unaware of the details or risks that this, this complexity could generate in order to cause a situation of organized irresponsibility. For that reason, the one who is better known about these structures and these risks I, I, is the own companies. With this idea, we arrive to the, to the conclusion that far less economic resources would be necessary to achieve the same prevention results the same prevention results related to uh, circumvent the difficulties set if the control and regulation are directly assumed by each legal person regarding its own organization. And the form of making that by the Spanish legislator with the new regulation uh, was the, to delegate to the legal persons the capacity to self-regulate the control of the legal criminal risk of one individual connected to or integrated in the, commit, in, the, sorry, in the company commits a crime in the favor of the company itself. And the idea is that with this, when the state grants this organizational freedom to the companies to control and regulate these risks, these risks um, it requires a result. And if the preventive and reactive result that means to uh, minimize the difficulties set is not reached by the compliance policies of the companies, for this case is when uh, the legal entity is going to be criminally sanctioning by the state. The idea is to sanction not because not adopting a formal um, compliance policies, but also because not uh, achieve one company the um, preventive result required by the state related to the fight against the phenomenon of um, organized irresponsibility. This is the main idea of the regulation such as has been introduced by the Spanish legislator and that we are going to use in order to correctly interpret this regulation such as I'm going to do now, when I'm going to describe the concrete facts that led the enforcement authorities to attribute criminal liability to a specific legal person in a concrete crime.
sorry, criminal procedure. Now, turning to the model of criminal liability of legal persons established by the Spanish legislature, um, the description is that the attribution of criminal liability to a legal person requires the concurrence of two types of facts. First of all, we, uh, is the so-called action of reference. The action of reference is the uh, criminal offence attempted or, or committed by the individual. And I'm going to stop here because uh, there is one idea I want to develop. The idea is that a perfect compliance, our ideal or more than suitable compliance program and uh, perfect effective compliance program um, should achieve that in the case of one individual connected to or integrated in, co in, a comp in this company try or attempt to commit a crime, finally um, couldn't bring the crime to fruition because the own, the own company with these preventive measures impede the final commission of the crime, stops the crime. This is uh, the ideal situation of how a uh, compliance policy should act in real. In this case, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to develop this idea after, uh, cause the exemption from criminal liability of legal entities. But, for example, if one crime is attempted by an individual, and in the specific case, the reason why this crime is impeded or uh, stopped is not the own policies of the company, but also... Or, uh, are, for example, the, um, the measures of the actions of the enforcement authorities. In this case, is the, if the company well not, uh, was not well organized, uh, it was possible to ascertain or to prove a defect organization, an organizational defect, as I'm going to explain after. Um, in this case, uh, it could be possible to, attribu to attribute criminal liability to this legal person. I think um, I want to focus the difference in this point of view because um, we, as you can see, we um, go back to the first idea. We return to the intention of the legislator that the idea is what's the required result um, uh, by the companies related to circumvent or um, reduce the difficulties set in order to discover the crime, um, to identify the perpetrators, and to prosecute and recover the affected assets by the crime. The second um, factual reality we have to prove or ascertain in order to attribute criminal liability to a legal person is the organization defect. Uh, I think the first premise we have to take into account to understand uh, this factual reality is that a company is it's not a human reality. It's a social and economic reality. One legal person is the title holder of a company. And one company, it's a professional organization, and this is why we use organization and not action, is professional organization of producing factors, work and capital, that uh, are convened in order uh, to uh, search um, by creating and distributing uh, products or goods of, or services uh, in order to achieve or obtain um, a profit in order to achieve the goals that has motivated the incorporation of the legal entity. This is the main idea, and this is why we speak about organizational defect and not we speak about an action. So, in real, in the Spanish criminal liability of legal person system, we have one crime committed by an individual, but by a human. is the action of reference. And this organizational defect is the mask that have used the individual in order to commit the action of reference because of the difficulties, because the uh, advantages that this uh, mask uh, cause or expresses or means in order to um, create some difficulties to discover this crime 
uh, to identify this individual and to recover the affected assets. The, the individual, when is thinking about the pros and cons of committing the crime, decides, he finally decides to commit the crime because it can commit the, this crime disguised in the complexity of the internal organizational structure of the company. So, uh, when we speak about inefficiency of the organization, we are speaking about doesn't reduce the difficulties set because of this organizational structure of the company. So, the main idea is that the compliance program should establish a preventive and reactive measures that avoid these situations of difficulty sets that lets the enforcement authorities in collaboration with the company to overcome these difficulties and or well to prevent the crime and uh, impede that the individual be, bring to fruition the crime or well lets the, uh, the, the enforcement authorities as fast as possible to minimize the disruptive, disruptive effects of the crime uh, materialized in, this, in the difficulty set before. Now, turning to the effectiveness of a prevention and detection program as grounds from the exemption from criminal liability of legal persons. Of course, when we are speaking about exemption from criminal liability of legal persons, we are speaking about the enrichment or the achievement of the uh, result required by uh, the uh, Spanish legislator when this figure was introduced, the criminal liability of legal persons. So much so that in a real case, uh, we have to assess in order to value if the compliance program is, if is or not effective. And so if we have to value the exemption from criminal liability of legal person, if uh, these results, this preventive or, re or reactive results has been achieved by the company from which one individual has committed a crime in the benefit of the company itself, um, by reducing the set difficulties. Economic criteria to assess the effectiveness of a prevention and detection program. This, I, I developed this idea in order to avoid an, 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 an one unconstitutional effect of objective uh, liability of legal entities. The first criteria I think we have to take into account in order uh, to value if the, the result required to the company is, which is the investment in compliance required. So, in order to ask to these questions, the first idea is to analyze the, analyze, analyze the economic capacity of the company. And the first idea is that it's not possible to require an investment in compliance that lead to the general bankruptcy of an entire economical, economic sector. This idea should be something similar to create an objective liability for legal persons on the scope of this criminal liability. Of course, this is not the idea led by the Spanish legislator. As I said before, the Spanish legislator wanted to improve at least possible cost the, capa the competitive capacity of the companies in order uh, to reach a perfect competitive market in the national sphere, not to destroy one subsector of economy by requiring an impossible result or impossible uh, investment in compliance. For that reason, in the, regula in, in the regulation set, in this model of criminal liability of legal entities, in 2015, the Spanish legislator has introduced an, an expression. And it's saying that it's not necessary to avoid in all the cases or to stop in all the cases the attempt or uh, to avoid in all the cases or to cancel the disruptive uh, effects of the crime, but also significantly reduce or reducing. This idea 
um, means that um, it's necessary one investment in compliance comparing to the uh, economic capacity of the company and uh, with the economic rule of effectiveness. For that reason, I wanted to say that uh, the lack of competitive capacity to survive in a context of free market of one specific legal person, not uh, a diligent or a special competitive legal person, of one specific legal person will not justify a, like, a lack sorry, of investment in compliance. In this case, probably we have a non-competitive company. And the idea of the legislator is to drive out or to throw out from the market this company by criminal sanction in this company in the cases in which has not adopted or implemented um, compliance policies by the justification that uh, it has not uh, re resources to allocate in, in compliance because of its economical situation. Probably its economical situation uh, is caused because it's not competitive. And the idea is not let uh, to this company survive, but also to um, drive out of the market in, or, in, in order to guarantee that uh, or to improve the, comp the competitive capacity of the remains company in the market and uh, to avoid the unfair competition of this company if uh, it reinvests the, the benefits created or generated by a crime committed by an individual integrated in that company because of the lack of, of compliance policies. The second idea of the economic criteria to assess the effectiveness is mm, the idea of uh, economic analysis of the organizational defect. There is one formula coined by the judge Learned Hand that compares um, the investment or the cost of the prevention with the cost of the harmful incident or result by the case that um, the risk not avoided by not adopting a measure of prevention was materialized in this result. The idea, is, I think, is very clear. There's no reason to require $100, for example, in prevention if the harmful incident, if the criminal offense that it's uh, possible to reduce because the capacity of reduced crimes of these, preventive, of these preventive measures, the cost of this harmful incident, for example, is only 10. We cannot allocate 100 resources to avoid a harmful incident of 10. There's no reason from an economic point of view to require this investment. Uh, the idea is to put um, these two factors combined with the capacity of the preventive measure to reduce this um, harmful incident, multiplying the cost of the reducing incident by the probability, probability of this one was committed in the case of not adopting sorry, the preventive measure. The third idea of the economic criteria to assess the effectiveness of a prevention or detection program, uh, the compliance policies, are that the preventive results required through the adequate, uh, which are the preventive results required through the adequate investment in compliance. Of course, by using, for example, an expert witness evidence, it's not possible to say by a company in order to ensure the, um, the exemption from criminal liability that they have invest or they, they have allocate the, resource, the, the resources requ uh, which investment is required by the enforcement authorities in a real case. Because the uh, effective and efficiency rule from an economic point of view requires the best result achieved with this investment. Because of that reason, there is one result required by using the least economic resources. These are the three main ideas that we have to take into account in consideration 
in order to value or to assess the one part of the effectiveness of a prevention and detection program, uh, join the uh, legal criteria to assess this effectiveness that I'm going to explain now. Legal criteria to assess the effectiveness of a detection and prevention program. Another time, I'm going uh, to return to the intention of the legislator. The idea was not to require um, a standard of compliance policies or a specific compliance policy. Otherwise, um, to delegate and to grant an organizational freedom to the companies to decide the specific uh, preventive measures or compliance policies they said are the best in order to prevent or uh, to avoid that one individual commits a crime in the benefit of the company and require, requiring by, uh, um, sa by sanctioning, not achieving the one result. This result is to minimize or um, to overcome the difficulties set in the first part of, the, uh, of this presentation. So, the conclusion is that, as, I, as you can see on the screen, is that when the legal person establishes a prevention system that makes it extraordinarily for individuals to commit a crime and to benefit from its results without any kind of personal cost for the perpetrator. When this idea, we have or we achieve two effects. And this is uh, the idea why the Spanish legislator has introduced this figure. First of all, directly, we can reduce the probability of a crime, a corporate, a financial crime, was committed by an individual for the uh, companies who abide, abide by this uh, regulation. And why? Because he knows that probably, he, she knows that probably he's going to be discovered if finally, if finally it uh, could bring the crime to fruition and perhaps he's going to be stopped of, of finally uh, committing the crime when he's going to attempt because of the uh, switchable preventive measures uh, adopted and implemented by the company. So, not only reduces the probability of committing these crimes for future potential perpetrator, but also for the per per perpetrator that in a real case has tried or has attempted to commit a crime that finally is stopped by the own company, and moreover, it minimizes or cancels the disruptive effects for the legal system in the, crime of, of, in the case of a crime was committed because uh, we are going to overcome the enforcement authorities in collaboration with the company, with the uh, takings of evidence he is going to provide to us because of the implementation of the reactive measures included in its compliance program uh, to discover the crime, to identify the perpetrator and to recover the effects. For that reason, this result, I think, could be quite effective in order to obtain uh, the final purpose um, pursuits by the Spanish legislature. That is to improve at least possible cost the free market in the national sphere. This idea is going to be clearly developed by distinguishing, distinguish, sorry, two types of measures included in an effective compliance to reach the set result. Poorly preventive measures, adoption and execution ex ante of committing a crime by an individual with the features I've said before, of a series of adequate vigilance and control measures, measures suitable to impede the commission of the crime. Is the situation I expressed before. Finally, the crime is not committed, is not bringing to fruition because of the pre, uh, prevention action or sorry, pre preventive measures of the owned company that perhaps after is going to present a complaint against the individual to the enforcement authorities. In this case, I think it's quite clear that the result required by the Spanish legislator 
has been fulfilled by the company. And for that reason, I think this company would be, uh, we should assess the exemption from criminal liability to this company. With these measures, we directly reduce the probability of committing crimes uh, for an individual integrated in or connected to that company. Reactive measures. Adoption and execution, ex ante of a series of reactive, of reactive or reaction measures, suitable not to cancel, necessarily to minimize from an economic point of view of the efficiency of the compliance program. This is why we use minimize and not, uh, not necessarily cancel. The disruptive effects. Why, which are the disruptive effects? Uh, for example, not recovering the affected assets that the perpetrator is not going to be discovered on, or, for example, that the crime is not going to be discovered. These are, these are the really disruptive effects of committing a crime on the scope of the corporate and financial crime. In the case in which a crime has been committed and how we are going to minimize, to minimize the unnecessary cancel from an economic uh, point of view of the... Um, uh, uh, um, of the effectiveness of, the, of, this, of that measure by actively the company contributing to clarify as fast as possible in order to achieve a fast um, sorry, a, a fast withdrawal of the indictment, the reality of the crime, the identity of the, the, identity of the perpetrators and the ultimate destination of the assets affected. With these, with these reactive measures, we can achieve um, two interests or endings or goals. Minimize or cancel the disruptive effects, as uh, I said before, and indirectly reduce by warning potential future perpetrators the probability of committing crimes when or in the moment they are going to weigh the pros and cons of committing the crime from the company that has implemented this kind of preventive and reactive measures of or compliance policies. Now, I think it's interesting to analyze uh, what kind of evidence in a real case, in a concrete, in a specific case, uh, in, the frame, in the framework of a criminal procedure, which may be provided by the indicted legal person, Probably one legal person could be indicted since the moment in which, in which someone, an individual, has committed a crime that benefits this company itself, this person is integrate, um, connected to and integrated in the company and has not been complained or discovered by the own company. Perhaps the crime has been discovered for the enforcement authorities. In this case, we have a taking of evidence against the legal entity, and this is the reason why we, in the first moment, we could indict to the legal entity. In these cases, which may be provided by this indicted legal person to prove the legal and the economic effectiveness of its model of organization and management of legal criminal, criminal risks against an attempted or committed crime. Of course, in order to prove the legal, and the, the legal effectiveness and due to the situation to, re, uh, to reach uh, an exemption from criminal liability with the grounds I explained before, it's possible to bring to the criminal procedure to provide to enforcement authorities, usually the public prosecutor office or the magistrate who is going to conduct the investigation phase, uh, documentary and parole evidence who has been created before exempted of committed the crime by the own company by using the uh, compliance policies. In this documentary, probably we can, um, we, uh, uh, first of all, this, docu this documentary um, should have been created by respecting and not infringing the ordinary, the ordinary Spanish law and the uh, constitutional individual rights granted by the Constitution. If it doesn't happen, we cannot assess this documentary 
and parallel evidence, and it would be, of course, a problem for uh, to overcome the difficulty set. For that reason, probably, uh, the company in these cases in which this documentary or parallel evidence was obtained by infringing individual rights uh, should be uh, found guilty of the crime, sh um, should be uh, convicted because an uh, orga organizational defect in the terms we have explained before. This documentary and this parole uh, could bring some information uh, relative to assess or to prove or ascertain, for example, a simulation on the scope on, or, uh, of um, um, tax fraud or, for example, uh, on the scope of an environmental criminal offence. Uh, and why? Because they are going to inform to us about uh, the form and information that uh, uh, was provided by the company to the, um, to the individuals that form part of it, perhaps about the organizational chart in order to discover which different uh, individuals uh, has participated in a business that perhaps is a simulation and it could be or constitutive of a fraud. And so, it's going to provide of transparency and clarity to avoid that the facts that led to uh, an objective and subjective imputation of individuals were disseminated along the organizational structure of the companies. When I speak about the expert evidence, I'm, expe I'm speaking about the ascertain of proof of the economic effective effectiveness of the model of organization of the compliance program. The idea is um, to allege the considerations relative to the investment required by use the uh, economic capacity of the, company, of the company and about the, resu the result required with this investment investment by using the rules of efficiency of the investment in order to minimize the difficulties set by using this uh, cost of prevention by the company. Finally, of course, is as my opinion, we are going to value or assess in order or well or uh, to value a mitigated mitigating circumstance or to value an exemption from criminal liability to a legal person in the case in which an individual has committed or attempted the crime, uh, like I've explained before, the full cooperation of the company, of the representative that acts, that acts on the framework of, a, of an specific criminal procedure with the criminal prosecution authorities in the investigation process during the pretrial phase. Now, I want uh, only to express one consideration relative to how the indicted legal person could provide this required evidence that has been created and on the scope of the developed compliance policies in a specific criminal procedure in order to obtain or to achieve the exemption, the exemption from criminal liability. The idea is the special consideration to the existence of conflict of interest. The idea, I said before, that a legal person is not a human reality. He doesn't act by itself. He needs a, a human, an individual, to act, for example, um, in a criminal procedure. For that reason, one individual should be appointed like a representative of that company in the case it was the company indicted. In this case, where we are speaking about the conflict in, of interest, we are speak, speaking about this situation. The, we, we have seen how the, the form to achieve the exemption from criminal liability of the specific legal person is to provide the enforcement authorities in that cases in which, because of the uh, uh, skillful, malicious uh, 
capacity of the individual by using fraudulent means uh, had been able to circumvent an effective prevention uh, measures and so could uh, bring the crime to fruition, in that case, uh, the problem is that uh, by applying the reactive measures, the result required uh, aimed to the legal person indicted is to identify the perpetrator. And the problem is if was appointed uh, as representative one indicted individual that because of committing um, the crime in the benefit of the company, because committing the action of reference. As we could see, it's difficult to imagine that in this case, this representative, by acting the data care and fiduciary duty of the company, by acting on the behalf of the company in this uh, um, prosecution or, sorry, investigation phase in a criminal procedure is going to provide to the enforcement authorities the documentary and the parole uh, suitable to discover that he has committed a crime and that uh, could um, conduct the process to his, her own conviction. For these cases, I think one effective compliance program should foresee the situation and uh, to prohibit to um, appoint to, uh, to represent the company in legal procedure an individual that was indicted in the moment of the company was indicted in the specific criminal procedure. And I think it should be foresee the relief of the individual representative in the case it was indicted after the indictment of the legal person. Uh, the main action of this representative is as fast as possible to achieve the withdrawal of the indictment of the legal entity by proving or ascertaining by providing uh, the documentary or parole takings of evidence. I've said before that um, this compliance policy was effective by uh, circumventing the enforcement authorities because of these takings of evidence, the difficulties said, and so by um, proving in the particular case what how and which one was the committed crime, who commits the crime, and um, reaching the possibility of prosecuting and recover the affected assets. In this case, I think, uh, is uh, the, this, um, sorry, <laughs> one moment. I think the duty of care and fiduciary duty uh, required to this representative is to achieve as, as, as possible this goal of uh, withdrawing the indictment of the legal entity and the economic disadvantages that uh, uh, led or caused by this uh, indictment. Finally, in conclusion, what I wanted to say is that uh, through the Spanish criminal liability of legal person system, it's possible to reduce significantly the corporate and financial crime at the lowest possible economic cost. This is the main idea. It's an ad economic advantage for companies because they are going to compete. If, if, they are, if they have competitive capacity, they are going to compete in a free market in which the unfair companies, the companies that are not effective, that are not competitive and reinvest the unfair benefits obtaining by individuals commit several crimes in the benefit of these companies to drive out these companies of the market. It's an, econo an undoubtable economic advantage from the, I think, from the more competitive companies. On the other hand, we have the uh, economical advantage from the state because at the lowest possible cost, because we are going to the, the idea is that this regulation is not an administrative burden, but also 
we try uh, to reduce as much as possible the investment cost in compliance to the companies in order to achieve the results required uh, for this state at the lowest possible cost because they have not to allocate resources that the state could allocate to another public end, it's possible to fight against the organized responsibility phenomenon and to reduce the crime, and so uh, to benefit consumers, to benefit the treasurer, to benefit uh, the creditors of the company, and to benefit in general to the uh, entire national economic economy. Sorry. Thank you very much for your attention. Now you are feel free, feel free to ask me any questions relative to the contents of this um, conference. Thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, if I may ask you, do you have in Spain already um, any criminal cases where you have uh, a... So, sorry, can you speak louder? I cannot hear you. Sorry. Do you have uh, in Spain uh, any cases where there are already verdicts against legal entities? Yeah. In the Public Prosecutor Office in Barcelona, on the scope of tax fraud, tax fraud crimes, we have had some. But the question is that it's not the model I like to study because usually are little companies. You know, when you are speaking about a little company, the capability of this company to generate or create a situation of organized irresponsibility is minimum. So for that reason, for example, the, the, the Spanish regulation provides the possibility of compensating the fines, the fine from the individual of, and the fine for the legal person in these cases because there is one identification of the legal entity with, the, for example, the administrator, the worker, the worker, or the individual that has committed the crime. More or less, in, in my experience, I uh, present um, perhaps 10 or uh, 15 claims against legal entities, and these entities have been indicted. Uh, but also, in that moment, I've not arrived to the oral trial, and any of these has been convicted if it has not been on the scope of uh, conformity, you know? This is more or less my experience now and the experience of the public prosecutor office in Barcelona at that moment, you know? But, for example, we are waiting the one oral trial about uh, because of the um, Barcelona's legal person related to ta one tax fraud, I think, committed on the scope of the business of, I don't remember the name of the player, um, of one player, I don't remember the name, sorry, of, of, of the Barcelona club. Hmm? No, Messi, no. Ah, no, Neymar, sorry. <laughs> now I, I remember, sorry. This is the situation, like, I think, uh, that we have now. But the, the, this idea is... Um, to warn the administrators of the company about not only the criminal liability of the legal person, but also the individual liabilities in which civil and criminal liabilities, because of the breach of duty of care and fiduciary duty, in which the administrators of that company could be involved. If something happens against the legal entity, such as, for example, to suffer an indictment. You know? How big can the fine be if, uh, if criminal case shows that uh, the entity doesn't have a uh, compliance system? No, for, uh, the, the, this is why I tried to say before. We are not going to criminal punish a, criminal, a legal person only for not adopting a compliance program. It's necessary that uh, one crime was attempted or committed. In these cases, depending on the crime attempted or committed by the individual, it's going to be calculated the exactly fine to impose to the legal entity if finally it was convicted. You know, it depends on the crime. 
uh, that it's the action of reference, one of the two facts that should concur and solve together in order to punish, to convict one legal entity. You know? Do you have any question else? Or? Yeah, one question. Uh, do you think that the legislator could have opted maybe for administrative law to introduce the requirement of the compliance programs and bypass criminal law in that case? Or? Uh, sorry? If? If the legislator could have opted for oh, yeah, sure. administrative no, law? Uh, before this regulation, it was possible um, to, sanction, to, to administrative sanction to legal entities but the, uh, because of crimes committed by individuals, but with two differences because before 2010 and nowadays it depends on the crime if it's a contravention or it's a criminal offence. The, but uh, the different, it, it existed uh, two differences uh, related to this uh, criminal regulation. The first um, difference, it was, uh, it was, the situation was not as clear as I think is today. In the administrative contravention, the regulation doesn't, didn't foresee uh, the duty of implementing or and creating a compliance program. Sometimes, in, by using leading case, in the um, jurisprudence, the, mag the administrative magistrate court said that it was necessary to prove or, or to uh, ascertain something more that one individual had committed the crime. And I think with this idea, this magistrate's court, the jurisprudence, was referring to the fact of an organizational defect or lack of due control. But it was not clear in the regulation. And uh, the second part is that um, I think the, the effect of the uh, criminal regulation is uh, most hard, I don't know how to explain, for the company than not the administrative cost. The, reputational, the criminal reputational cost is higher. If the company is not especially huge, the only indictment could cause a situation of bankruptcy because it's going to damage the uh, profile risk in order to obtain, finan uh, to be financed by the banks in order to maintain the relations with suppliers and clients. And because of that reason, I think all the administrators of the companies uh, should, be, uh, should take care of this situation uh, to implement and adopt a suitable compliance program in order to, uh, to avoid, to encourage individuals to commit the crime. I think this new regulation encourages much better to the own companies to self-regulate the legal criminal risks of committing the crime and to obtain the results required than not the administrative regulation. Arul. Yeah? Do you have any question else? Okay. Related with the Marisa's oh, question, sorry, if you related speak, with the Marisa's question, I would like to know if you think that if you think that criminal um, level has some limits in respect to administrative level. Criminal level? Yes. If you have limits at the criminal level to fight against private corruption. Uh, when you are speaking about limits, what kind of limits or thresholds you are speaking about? I'm not sure. Uh, yes, in order even to Even material, yeah. even real, even potential. So what? <laughs> even real limits or material or potential. Uh, okay. Well, when I think, well, I'm going, I think, I try to explain or to describe economic limits from a point of view by speaking um, about uh, 
medium-sized companies, for example, by using or by uh, taking into account the economic capacity, for example, to decide the investment in prevention of each company in order not to lead that company to the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. For example, um, we have to consider the capacity of each company depending on the empresa, empre, uh, business activity to generate situations of organized irresponsibility. It's not the same a huge international company that a company with 30 workers in order to generate a situation of uh, organized irresponsibility with the meaning of difficulties of uh, assess or discover the facts that led the, the enforcement authorities to objectives and subjective attribute a crime to the individual that has committed it, because these facts should be disseminated for the whole structure of the company. This situation is quite difficult that happens with a medium-sized company, for example, than not with a huge company. This idea should be taken into account in order to assess the effectiveness of the company and so to assess if it should be exempted from criminal liability in a specific case in which an individual has committed a crime or perhaps one attempted has been stopped by the own company. This is the idea uh, you wanted the... Well, in, in fact, I would like to know if from your point of view, from the prosecutor's office, mm -hmm. you think you have limit to fight ah, to I'm crimes. limited to fight. Yes. Ah, okay. Well, no, the idea is that I'm not going to assess the complete compliance program of, for example, one million of pages. Okay. The idea is that the company is going to collaborate with me, uh, sorry, with me in order to reach the exemption from uh, criminal liability or in order to achieve a qualified mitigating circumstance. Mm -hmm. For that reason, the company is uh, the person, the legal person, who is going to provide to bring some takings in evidence in order to prove during the criminal procedure the, the reality of the crime committed, the perpetrators of the crime, and uh, in order to uh, take or bring or provide some facilities to prosecute and recover the affected assets. And in this situation, if the takings of evidence I consider were enough to significantly reduce these disruptive effects of the crime in the specific case, for my, in my opinion, for my point of view, like a, as a prosecutor, a public prosecutor, and I think from the point of view of the magistrate who conducts the criminal procedure or from the point of view of the magistrate course that is going to assess after the oral trial the evidences, the evidence, um, I think it's possible to acquit the legal person because of the, his qualified collaboration. So, with this figure, wh what we are trying to do is uh, to complete our uh, limitations mm -hmm. to investigate mm -hmm. these crimes okay. with the collaboration of the own company by sanctioning the company when this collaboration was not qualified. Mm -hmm. And it was... Uh, the situation was or generates a profit or a benefit from the own company itself. Well, I wanted to add one more thing. In order um, to, um, to, uh, to analyze one economical advantage for the company, if they are organized in compliance by abiding by these regulations, not only is difficult to commit a crime for an individual from the company that uh, generates a benefit for the company, but also is extremely difficult to commit a crime by an individual against the own company, like, for such, for example, a misappropriation or disloyalty in the administration. So much, this is another economic advantage of this figure. Do you know what I mean? And uh, about the limits, uh, the material and personal limits we have in order to prosecute these crimes, this is why I think the Spanish legislator, by using 
the economic role of um, prosecuting these crimes at the lowest possible uh, cost has introduced this figure uh, that has been provided. You know? Do somebody has any question or no? Okay, so that we conclude that we have a little break of uh, 10 minutes and we come back with the following presentation. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much Thank for you very your much. attention. Thank you, Oscar.